In this video, I talk about the functions of six main indicators of steam gauge flight instruments. Hey guys, my name is Reza. This is actually the first video I've posted on YouTube. And please consider subscribing and without further ado, let's get straight into it. First of all, it's worth noting that this type of cockpit is considered to be old because it uses older technology compared with the technology behind a glass cockpit. However, you can find many professional pilots who have experienced both types and believe steam gauge cockpits are still very advantageous and uh, training aircrafts being used by flight schools are mostly equipped with a steam gauge cockpit. The major reason is the way they give the pilot information. For instance, a glass cockpit uses a speed tape and an altitude tape showing the pilot only numbers going up and down but in a steam gauge it's much easier to understand and the whole range of the speed you can fly at is visible. Therefore, overall it has a much better user interface and flight school graduates can get necessary information simply during the flight. So we can see that sometimes the old technology can't be beaten, even though glass cockpits are more reliable and flexible and represent much more data of different systems of an advanced aircraft. But in fact they're not really necessary in an ordinary two-seat training plane and maybe only the candidates who are gonna get at least a PPL or private pilot license need to get familiar with an electronic cockpit over time. So until here we very briefly talked about the main reason a pilot should be completely familiar with the old type of cockpits. From now on we're gonna focus only on the flight instruments used in a six-pack steam gauge. So these instruments are arranged in a six-pack formation right in front of the left seat pilot. They are airspeed indicator, vertical speed indicator, altimeter, attitude indicator, turn coordinator, and heading indicator. So before we jump into each one of them, I should say there are two types of systems that power these instruments. First one is the pitot static system, which is used for airspeed indicator, vertical speed indicator, and altimeter. Second type is gyroscopic, which means, as you guess, it uses a gyro and we'll talk about it a bit later on and this system is used in attitude indicator, turn coordinator and heading indicator. There is a tube on the plane, usually it's placed under the wings or next to the nose. During the flight, the ram air comes into that tube and the faster you fly, the more ram air comes in, which increases the pressure in that small chamber and that pressure will be compared with the static pressure which comes from a static port on the side of the plane. So as you see in this picture, the ram air is used by only airspeed indicator, while the static pressure, which is provided by the static port, is used by all three instruments. Mostly the speed of airplanes is shown in knots, and one of the most important things you should know is those arcs that are shown in different colors. In this case, you see three colored arcs and a red line. When the flaps are down, you should fly only at the speed of the range of white arc. If you fly slower than that, as you might guess, you're likely to stall. In this example, that lower limit, as you see in this picture, is 40 knots. When the flaps are up and in line with the rest of the wing, you can fly pretty faster in the range of the green and the yellow arc. The green arc is for the normal cruising speed. You can fly at the speed within the range of the yellow arc, only when the air is smooth and as you might guess the red line is the maximum speed you can fly with that particular airplane. In general, during landing or taking off when the flaps are up you should fly a bit faster in order to avoid a stalling because in this situation less lift force is generated by the wings. Next we have the vertical speed indicator. It tells you at what rate you're climbing or descending mostly in 1000 feet per minute. But it has a drawback you should be aware of, which is its lag. In fact, it takes a few seconds to give you the information and if you're maneuvering or moving the airplane fast around, it actually becomes quite useless. The last speed of aesthetic system is the altimeter, which measures the altitude you're flying at above sea level. As you see, it has three pointers 
The longest one with a triangular on its tip shows sweet in ten thousands, the shortest one in thousands, and the last one in hundreds. For instance, this one here is showing 10,180 feet. As I said earlier, the altimeter uses a static port which is located on the fuselage of an airplane. There is a capsule in the altimeter and as you climb, the air pressure will decrease and the capsule expands and if you descend, it contracts and based on that, it measures the altitude. As you see in this picture, there is also an adjustment knob which is used for adjusting the pressure setting. A pilot can get the setting from the nearest airport in order to see the correct altitude. Besides, you can see the setting through the altimeter setting window. As I mentioned earlier, these three instruments operate with gyros that are mounted in one or two gimbals and spin at a high speed. Gyros are rigid in space. According to a physics law, a spinning object tends to maintain its orientation. And that's the property used in these instruments. It means if the plane rolls, pitches or yaws, they can tell the pilot exactly the direction and the situation of the plane. These gyros can either be powered by an electric motor or a vacuum pump. Worth noting that vacuum pumps tend much more to fail due to their complexity. Attitude indicator or artificial horizon, which gives you an image of aircraft's wings relative to the ground and the sky. And this instrument can be always very useful, especially when the sky is not clear, say it's cloudy. It's sensitive to two motions, pitch and roll. These lines in the middle indicate the degree of pitch relative to the horizon when you use elevators on the horizontal stabilizer. These degrees at the top are called the bank index when you roll left or right through using the ailerons on the wings, your angle of bank will change and you can notice that on the attitude indicator like this. Another gyroscopic instrument we're going to talk about is the turn coordinator. As you see, there is a ball in a fluid at the bottom. When you're turning, that ball tells you whether your turn is coordinated or not. In, in other words, whether you're skidding or slipping or neither of them. In fact, it indicates the quality of the turn. For instance, if you're rolling the plane clockwise, but the plane yaws to the left, for any reason, this is called a slip and sometimes is used intentionally in order to reduce altitude rapidly without picking up too much speed. Because in this situation, the whole fuselage is used as a massive air brake. During this, the ball uh, in the instrument is in the same side as the lowered wing and is telling the pilot that more rudder is needed in this side in order to become coordinated. A skid is the opposite of a slip. If you put too much, for example, right rudder in a right turn, the nose turns further in that direction. The ball will go to the opposite side you're turning, meaning more rudder is needed in the side it's pointing, in this case left, or less rudder is needed in the opposite side, which is right in this example. All in all, it's worth noting that a skid is more dangerous than a slip and can lead to a stalling at a lower speed close to the ground and it can be quite fatal because there is no time actually for recovery. The last instrument we're going to talk about in this video will be the heading indicator which is also called directional gyro and it has the same function as a compass but the way it works is pretty different. Compasses are designed to move horizontally and when the plane is tilted, they usually lose their function, but a heading indicator doesn't actually. This instrument has only one issue, which is that the pilot should reset that with an adjustment knob at the bottom of it before taking off or during cruise while flying straight at a constant speed. It's worth mentioning that a glass cockpit doesn't have such problem. So I hope you guys enjoyed it and have learned something. In general, if you're passionate about aeronautics, you can learn so much with the following videos I'm gonna post here in this channel. And in the end, I wish you success and thanks for watching.